Hi, and welcome to another episode of Real Estate with Howard Drukarsh. For those who don't know me, uh, I'm one of the co-founders of the largest independent brokerage in Canada. Um, I've also been a two-term member of the Toronto Real Estate, Toronto Regional Real Estate Board, Board of Directors. I've also been on the Board of Directors of the Real Estate Council of Ontario, RICO, which is the regulator for all real estate agents in Ontario. And I sit on the board of the company I co-founded. Uh, if you'd like to learn more about me, there's a podcast called Intro, which talks about my journey from uh, before real estate and how I got involved with this company. This isn't going to be a typical real estate podcast because my goal or our goal with this is to talk to agents, um, salespeople, brokers, uh, developers, uh, media people, uh, and even some people outside real estate. And it's all about their t trajectory. How, how did they go from beginning to become successful? Because along the way, there's a lot of roadblock, roadblocks, setbacks, um, rejection, failures, but you've got to keep moving towards your goal. And, and these people on our podcast have proven they know how to do that. Um, my, my own role when I was uh, active uh, in, in our company was I... Um, I started to manage after we, we grew because my partner uh, stayed to, my partner Arthur Bartram stayed to be the broker of record and I would manage the different branches as, as we opened them up. Um, after that, I also became president uh, and broker of record for a few years. And one of the important things in doing that role is recruiting, that is interviewing and hiring salespeople. And I really enjoyed it. And in the time I was doing it, I, I've hired over a thousand people. Um, one of the things I found is in meeting people who, uh, who are in real estate, they had just fascinating backgrounds, uh, uh, unique personalities, and some just stood out. I, I would meet them and I, I just knew that they would do well and I couldn't put my finger on it. It was just a gut feeling, perhaps because I had met so many agents. And today, our guest is Julia Crescian. Uh, Julia, um, I met at uh, one of our branches about two years ago. Um, and I just thought, wow, she's going to do really well, and, and, and she has. So, uh, Julia, welcome to our podcast. Oh, hello, Howard. It's very nice to see you. Thank you. Healthy and safe. Yes, yes. Thank you. And you too. So one of, the, you. one of the things we like to start with is, because I think this really influences uh, people's um, upbringing, it influences where they go with their life. Uh, tell us a bit about your background. Um, before you got into real estate and, and maybe about where you grew up. I grew up in a very little country called Moldova. It's between Ukraine and Romania. Mm -hmm. um, I had a very good childhood. That's what I can definitely tell you. It's good to hear. And yes. Yeah. Uh, I went to university. My dream, first of all, my dream was to be a very, very good lawyer. Mm -hmm. So I went to university. I got my uh, legal background. And I have a master's degree in criminal law. And this was my dream. And I used to work as a lawyer. But uh, in one day, I decided, um, let me try to immigrate. And the reason was, uh, when I was, I think it was second year of university, I went to America. It was a very popular program that time called Work and Travel. So I went to America and I saw how people were living there and I said, let me try. If I can be a lawyer in Moldova, I definitely can try to be a lawyer in uh, America. Which part of the U.S. did you go to? Uh, it was State Maine. Okay. Um, yeah. And I, oh my God, I, I spent a great time there and I still um, a friend with the people uh, from the little inn yes. uh, where I was working. Okay, cool. So... When I came back to Moldova, and I said to that time I was already married, so I said to my husband, "Look, we have to try to immigrate in America. The only one legal option was um, to win a green card. Mm -hmm. I'm not really lucky with any lottery, so I find out uh, about Canada, so I can immigrate to Canada. And um, I was, I think, 22 years old that time, or 23 years old." And uh, I submitted all the documents, and it was a long process of immigration. It takes me six years. Wow, that's a yeah. long process. Yeah. It was a long process, but everything that's happened happened for the better reason for me. 
I was six years in the progress and in, in the process of immigration. And when I came to Canada, I already had two kids, mm. my, my boys. And um, then I started my life from the beginning here. It was a very hard um, part of my life, this first year of immigration. And I think I'm not the only one who was crying the first year and saying, oh, I want to go back home. I was successful there. But then I said, no, I'm not this type of person. Let me try. Mm -hmm. So I went to the lawyer's office and I was working there for free, which I think most of the people are doing the same when they are just starting their career here in Canada. Mm -hmm. And um, it was three months I was working. And then I said, okay, I have to go further and I want to work um, with them with another lawyer. It was my decision and uh, I got a huge experience. I was working with the very good lawyers and um, you know, the part of the lawyer's job is to cut the check commission mm -hmm. to the brokerage. Yes. So I was working in the numbers and I said, oh my <laughs> God, they're doing so well. Right. But I was doing well as well. Uh -huh. <laughs> and my husband said to me one day, Julia, do you want to try to be a real estate agent? And I said, um, I don't know. I don't think so. Um, I have a Russian accent and um, my English was not so good. And um, then I said, OK, let me try. So I went to Oria College. I got my real estate license. And next day I got my first client. Mm, wow, that, that's the way to do it. No waiting. So yeah. so uh, what about in, in your family background? Um, what kind of influence or what kind of work uh, your father or your mother? Uh, my mom, she was a military person. Uh, she used to work in uh, Minister of, um, oh my God, I don't remember exactly how it's called, but it was all for life. She, she was working there, Minister of um, Internal Affairs, I think. Mm -hmm. Yes. And um, uh, my father, uh, they were divorced. They divorced when I was one years old. I see. Okay. So my father, he went to Russia and um, he's a businessman there. Okay. Well, one of, the yeah. thing, one of the things about our business is um, there's a lot of things that come about to, to make you successful. Um, I want to ask this. In, 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 your, in your career, which I know has been really uh, remarkably successful, uh, how important were these things? Hard work, luck, persistence. Oh my God, everything is very important. Okay. <laughs> Hard work. Um, when I decided to create my own business, um, when I got my real estate license, I thought I would have some days off. No, it's not true. I don't have any days off. Mm -hmm. Any. I'm working 24-7 because I have to be available for my clients all the time, every day. It doesn't matter if it's six o'clock in the morning or um, 12 o'clock at night. I have to be available because sometimes they need my advice. They need just to speak with me mm -hmm. because real estate agent is not only about um, to sell or buy or promote. It's about to be helpful and sometimes to be maybe a psychologist for a client or to give them any advice or just to listen to them. Mm -hmm. So I don't have any days off. And I don't think I will have. <laughs> well, but, but. And, um, uh, luck. Oh my God. It is important. It is important. And that's what I find out in my life. Every time, everything that's happened with me happened for the better reason. And I think I do have this luck. Even when I was going to America in the office, when I was signing an agreement where I will be working, one girl just came and said, do not take this contract. You will be working in McDonald's. Take this one. It will be better for you. Why she decided to speak with me, it was a line of people behind. And I was very lucky that I went to work with these people in the little inn. Mm -hmm. So, yes, the luck is very important. And um, you have to be very, very um, uh, self-motivated. Wake up in the morning. Do your schedule. The schedule is one of the most important part in my life because I'm not uh, only doing real estate. I, I play tennis. I uh, do yoga. I do gym. And I have to find time. So sometimes I'm going to yoga class at 5 a.m. 
and then I start my day at eight or seven. Doesn't matter, but you have to be consistent with the schedule. Uh, of course, I have two kids. I have to spend some time with them. That's why I always have my laptop with me. And if my son plays tennis, I'm just sitting in the chair with my laptop and doing my job. Well, so Julie, I, I know from social media, I don't know if there's a more avid mom promoting tennis <laughs> than Julie Gretchen. <laughs> Yes, I try to spend uh, as much time as I can with my kids. Even uh, my son sometimes has classes at 6.30 in the morning. Wow. Uh, the tennis class. And I'm there with my laptop. Okay, cool. Doing something, replying to my emails, uh, do my schedule, prepare something for um, the interview or something. And, you know, it's interesting because when I started in the business, the, uh, it, it was very non-digital. Uh, I started even before Blackberries were common. You know, it's, I always tell, I tell, uh, when I used to interview new people in the business, I tell them a story. Uh, one day uh, I go to the office and there's a machine at the front and I say, what's this? And they said, it's a fax machine. So I was in the business before fax, but, but I wasn't in the business before electricity. So uh, that, that's that. But but persistence. I remember when I was at the office, you you were using um, social media as a way to get yeah. known, you, and and I thought you had a really good good way of doing. Do you want to talk about what that was for you? How you used it? Yeah. So um, when you just started, you have to find out your way to do the real estate. Um, I decided to start with the door knocking and the Facebook. Mm -hmm. So the door knocking war um, was very successful for me. I I did um, I found a couple clients, um, but I didn't have enough time to do it because you have to go like to choose the area, then the street, then you have to take the records of the people who you met, what are you were <laughs> talking about, right. what they're thinking about to sell, buy, rent, and um, it was not enough time for me to do it. So I said, okay, let me try uh, on Facebook. And uh, I started promoted, um, promoting our right at home listings. And that's how I found my very, very good client. And I still remember it was um, Thanksgiving Day two years ago when one of the people from Facebook texted me and said, hey, can you show me this property tonight? Wow. And he said, Oh my God. Oh my God. It's Thanksgiving. And this, and, and I was so excited. I said, Yes. I said, Oh my God. I have to call the brokerage first and find out if today's Thanksgiving day, if the client, a client wants to see us today. So I set up, um, an appointment and I texted back to this client and said, Yes, I'm ready to show you this property. And we went there and, um, he, he was a teacher. And I was surprised that he found me on the Facebook. I showed him the property, everything, everything was fine. And he said, this is what I want. And I want you to find me something similar. And uh, I said, okay, I will do my best. So I started sent him, sending him some listings um, as per his criteria. And in a year, he came back to me and said, Julia, can you please buy for me this house? And I showed him this house, and I think it was a very complicated deal. But again, because I had the legal background, it was a state sale with the acreage and uh, septic and everything. And I said, yes, I will do it. So he, um, I bought for him this uh, property. I sold his property, and I and he's still my very good client. He um, sent me another, his mom, to sell uh, her house as well. So... It was a very good um, situation for me, an opportunity when you can advertise right at home listings on the Facebook and find a client from there. But I also think for you, there's, there, I mean, you just talked about you're so organized. Um, I asked about how important is persistence. I mean, clearly persistence, you know, you, you're self-motivated with, with the idea of, of being successful. Um, and I think that the important thing in this business is you can get off track. In other words, you can be very busy and then you go, okay, I've been really busy. I'll take a break. There is no breaks. You said it 24 mm -hmm. seven, but that's what, again, from, from my own experience in the business, uh, when I'd meet with people and they'd ask me like, well, you know, what should be my goal in real estate? Really simple. Your goal in real estate should be a referral business because Absolutely. when people call you, 
you, it's the best business you could ever be in. And apparently yeah. that's right. That's working for you very well now. Oh, well, thank you. Yes. It okay. Is. Um, one of the things, the other things about um, being an entrepreneur is, is the concept of risk. Like, you know, if you become a real estate agent, you're an entrepreneur. Um, and how risk averse or how comfortable are you with taking, well, you took the risk. So how comfortable with you were you, uh, you and your husband when you decide to take the risk of becoming licensed as an agent? Uh, I, am, I am a very risky person. Okay. And that's what I can tell you. First of all, when I came to Canada, um, I was already, I think, 32, and um, I didn't have any money with me, So, but, uh, but I had two kids. And I said, okay, I have to do something that will help me to make money and grow my business and um, have a great relationship and make new friends here, which is a very hard uh, part mm -hmm. to make friends when you're 32 already. So um, when I got my real estate license, and next day, my lawyer said to me, Julia, good luck, and I wish you all the best, and I will refer clients to you. I said, okay. So it was, I think it was February. No, not February. It was July. When I was staying at home, it was my first day without the lawyer's job. Uh, I got my last salary from him. And I was at home and said, oh, my God, what I did. I don't have any clients and I don't have, like, income. What I have to do? And then I said to myself, just work hard. Do what you think to be better and go forward and never give up. That's what I did. That's how I got my first client. And it, it was a man. I was talking to him while I was waiting my son from Taekwondo outside and i said to him as long as i will get my real estate license i will do my best to make my client happy perfect and when he called me next day after i got my real estate license he asked me said are you still wants to do your best for your client and i said yes this is how i got my first listing and then it was but it's my again it's my opinion the real estate is all about the relationship mm -hmm all about the relationships with the people. And then my lawyer called me and said, hey, I decided to buy a cottage. Can you help me, please? Of course. <laughs> and I did. That's the, that's the best then, answer when anyone asks you, can you sell an apartment building? Of course. <laughs> yes, absolutely. <laughs> yeah, and it was another hard part for me because to sell the cottage, you have to have not only... Uh, legal knowledge and real estate knowledge you have to find out what's in septic tank exactly and uh, everything everything there the municipal road not municipal they need to pay any fees garbage removal everything so it was a little bit scared but uh i said okay okay i have to do it so right now i know everything about the septic everything great and <laughs> Yeah, and it was interesting for me. I like to have listing a little bit challenging. Mm -hmm. not, not like the regular. I love the regular ones, but sometimes I like, I like to be challenging. Well, and, you, uh, go, sorry, go ahead. Yeah, um, I that time I realized that it's very risky to lose a very good job and to start my career from the beginning. But when you see your kids in front of you and you find out that you immigrate to Canada, not like when you're 18 or 19, you have to you have to take a risk. And I did, and I'm very happy that I did it. And you know, it's interesting. I did the same thing in as much as I was a fairly successful real estate agent, and my myself and my 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 active business partner, Arthur Bartram, uh, we just had this gut feeling that we 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 had an idea that would work. And uh, and, and I find with you, you basically explain the same thing. Nobody was promising you success, but you just had an idea it would work and you have to work hard. Everybody has to work hard to be successful. But I think that's something that's uh, um, it's hard to define. I mean, the, the idea for me doing these podcasts, I just felt it's something I could do. And, and it's a you know, it's a, an evolution of my real estate career. But I, I, when you talk, I see the same thing. You, 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 you're intentional. In other words, you know what you want to do. You know what you have to do to get there. And 
nothing's going to stop you. That that's basically, oh, I guess, ninety percent of success. You know, you just have to keep working towards your goal and 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 you know and overcome all, you know, every setback that you said. And you've done really well, and that that's why I wanted to, you know, why we thought you'd be good on this on this podcast because it's a great story. It's a great story of what you've accomplished. So um, let me go on with my questions. What what was the biggest influence uh, in your life? Uh, and it can be anybody. It can be family. It can be business. It can be friends. Uh, I think it's always my family. Okay. It's always my family. Okay. Here's something that. Uh, okay. Uh, did you want to tell more or? Or. No, it's, it's always <laughs> okay. one is and will be my family. Perfect. Great. Good answer. And I think you know I I, I understand that as well. Um, here's something that I remember finding out for me when I was, uh, selling is this concept of loyalty and, and the best way to describe, what does that mean when you're a real estate agent? Here's what I think it means. There's two kinds of phone calls you can get, uh, actually one kind and one, one big surprise. You've been talking to someone, they like you, you like them, they're going to list their house. You're on your way to pick up some groceries. You drive by their house. There's someone else's sign on the lawn. That's that's a big surprise, and you have to learn how to deal with that kind of rejection. And it, it it can even be family members. Quite often, family members are the one that do it most. The other thing is the phone call that's and listen, Julia may not have had this, so maybe you won't run into this. Um, you get the phone call from a client who says, "Julia, I'm so excited," and you're thinking, "Oh, I wonder why." You've been showing them houses and everything, condos, and they say, "I just bought a condo," and now you have to <laughs> react. Oh, I'm happy for you, right? Um, those are the parts where, where loyalty, and, and the reason I bring up those extremes, I, I just remember loyalty to me with the client was everything. I, I would go through brick walls because there was that no question they were loyal to me. And in your case? Um, I have a very maybe weird opinion about um, the two calls that you were talking about. Okay. So first of all, when I... For example, I had an interview with the people or with the friends or I don't know. Yeah, you're right. Most of the people, the friends who decided to go with another realtor. <laughs> okay. But I always uh, tell them, you have, uh, you just uh, listening to my uh, presentation and I want you to sleep with me in mind. Because right now you feel very comfortable with me. And you decided, yes, this is exactly the real estate agent that I want to work with. But tomorrow morning, it can be a reason that you will change your mind. So I always, I never signed the buyer's representation agreement or seller's representation agreement the day when I did my uh, presentation. Never. I want people to understand if I'm exactly the person that they want to work with. I can tell you more. Sometimes people call me. And they say, hey, Julia, um, my daughter wants to sell a condo, but she has a friend who's a real estate agent. And probably she will be using uh, her or him as a real estate agent. But can you tell me, please, what do you think about it? And I said, okay, because I'm not uh, talking directly to her daughter. I said, listen, let her do it with the real estate agent that she prefers. And if I can help you with something in the future, I will be more than happy. I think everything that happens, happens from there. If it's my client, it will be 100% my client. I don't need it. And sometimes you can be the best real estate agent in the area and you did your presentation very well and everything is good. But something here tells them something is not right. Let me try another real estate agent. And I always, always respect uh, my client or customer's opinion. They have to feel comfortable with the real estate agent. They have to trust your uh, uh, their real estate agent. So that's why I always give them one day to decide if they want to go with me or not. And if they decided to go with another real estate uh, real estate agent, I just said I wish them a good luck, and uh, I'm going further. I will find another client. I'm very I I don't have this um, feeling of competition. Mm -hmm. Oh, I'm the best one. I can be the best one, but you have to feel comfortable with me because it's a very stressful pro process. And uh, we will be on the phone and we will see each other like probably 
a couple of times a week or a day, if you don't feel comfortable with me, it's no reason to work with me because I'm not the person that you want to see. So that it's my opinion. Again, it's my opinion, and I'm a very easygoing person with people. When I started in the business, there was a lot of training, and some of the training said that um, you know you should be able to work with people that you don't necessarily like, but just the business relation. I could never do that. I'm a lot like you uh, for the same reasons. They're going to call you six in the morning, twelve at night. They're going to be under all kinds of stress, um, and and I think people respect your approach. That is, you you respect the client. You're not trying to pressure them into signing a contract. Um, the best compliment I ever got, uh, and this is probably what you'll see in your career as well, is uh, saw a client, oh God, years after we had done a transaction. And he said, you know, Howard, I don't really remember any of the details about that, but I just remember how comfortable it was working with you. And that's your goal, right? They, they want to yeah. be comfortable working with you. So, um, okay, let, let me ask another question here. Um, I mean, I don't think there are many, but um, do you have any regrets? Anything that you thought, oh, I wish I had done this or done that? No, I don't okay. have any regrets because um, I think, again, everything that's happened happened for the better reason. And if something's happened with me in the past, it means that I have to go through it and I will be better. Okay. If a new agent came to you um, and uh, wanted to have advice, uh, what would you tell a new agent uh, with your experience now? Um, it's a lot to tell <laughs> okay. the new agent, but I, first of all, I will try to help uh, this person um, to find out his or her way in um, this business, and I will always support. I, you know, when I came to write at home, I said that I want to be a mentor. But then I find out that it's, uh, you have to have experience like at least five years to be a mentor. Mm -hmm. But I'm always happy to help, to give any advice and to encourage people um, to do what they need to do in real estate. Like for sure, they have to believe in themselves. They have to be very, very disciplined. This is one of the most important things in real estate. You have to pick up the phone all the time, all the time. Sometimes like... I have a rule. My email, if I got an email, maximum five minutes. Maximum five minutes and I have to reply. If it's if it's clients, if it's, for example, this department or something, yes, I, I understand that I can um, reply like in an hour. But if it's a client with the question, mm -hmm. I have to reply in five minutes, maximum. And that, so, that is, and it, you know, it, again, kind of the evolution of, of communication. Once people had smartphones, uh, and I remember, you know, I was getting into this as it, as it unfolded. If your client is expecting you to call back in one or two minutes, and that's the way the world is, you've got to call back in one or two minutes. Your case, five minutes. Of course, five minutes is, is as good. Um, because people expect that response. And the way you've developed your career, I mean, balancing family life, balancing, you know, your own needs for physical fitness, you know, obviously taking care of your kids, it's a lot, you know, like, I mean, there's a, it's a lot of organizing, but the rewards are great, right? I mean, once you've got that system, the rewards are terrific. Yeah, absolutely. Okay. I was surprised that I got my first um, gold award in a year. Yeah. And, and that was what I was saying in the introduction. You know, when I met you, there was just, I, I knew you were new to the business, but you showed me, this is what I'm doing. Like you're, oh, you had great enthusiasm and, uh, Here's another expression uh, from my earlier career in the business is that uh, um, enthusiasm is a terrific replacement for knowledge. <laughs> right. So if you walk in so enthused, they're gonna, and you had that naturally in the business. So, you know, that's why I'm, I'm glad we reconnected because I, you know, I'm terrifically glad to see how, how, you, how, you've, uh, how you've done well. One of the things in business, certainly in our business, is adaptability. Things that you never expected to happen are going to happen. And, uh, um, let's talk about COVID again. This is something different. Um, if you were going to get into the business now, how would you do things or would you do things differently than when you started? Um, when I started, like, to be honest with you, the, this year was very, very successful for me. 
even with COVID. Um, but there's no surprise. Yeah, it, it, <laughs> Julia, it was not. Julia, there's no surprise. You've just outlined why you're going to be successful and you've got the proof. Yeah, but I set up a goal last year. I said I have to do twice more this year. Okay. And the COVID started, but I said, no, I still have my goal. And I did. Um, yeah, it's it for sure no door knocking because people uh, don't want to open the doors right now and to speak with people because right. because right. of the COVID. But again, again, Facebook, Instagram, um, social media advertising. I think um, it was exactly the same way, just except door knocking. Okay. Okay. Here, yeah. here, here, here's, here's my last question. And, uh, uh, this is one I like to keep in my pocket because I find it's the most interesting one. Um, if you were going to tell your 20 year old self something now that you've been through all the things you've been through, what, what would you say? Never give up. Great advice. Believe in yourself. Great advice. All right. You know, on that note, um, pleasure to see you again. Um, obviously, stay healthy. We want you to, we want you to continue to be healthy. Um, down the road, we're going to perhaps have you back, and we'll, we'll talk again about your career. In the meantime, I want to say thanks for being on our podcast, and uh, I'm sure you'll have a great year in 2021. Thanks, Julia. Thank you so much. Take care. Howard. Okay. Thank you for joining us. Um, and if you, uh, if you liked our podcast, please like it comment, and subscribe to our podcast. And also, we'd love to hear from you. If you'd like to reach us, you can reach us on the net at rewithhd.com. That's rewithhd.com. Or you can email us at info at rewithhd.com. So this is a wrap for this show, and I want to just wish everybody safety, uh, good health, and we'll see you next time. Thanks.